Hi, my name is Tim Wilson. I'm from Red Rocket Studio. In this project, what we're going to do is we're going to make a poster and we're going to start from absolute scratch and take it all the way through every single step until you have the most amazing poster all ready to be sent out for printing. This is one of the projects from our Udemy course. Um, the course links are available down the bottom if you want to have a look and it's about 12 hours worth of training on that course. Anyway, let's jump straight into the project now. So for our project, what we're going to do is we're going to create a poster ready for print and we'll take it from right scratch all the way through to where it's ready to just send off to the printers. So let's get going. Now I'm going to break this project into three sections. The first section is going to be using some of the tools that we just looked at to redraw a shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by clicking on the create new button. Now we're doing something for print. So I'm going to go across to the print tab along the top. I want my poster to be A4, so I'm going to click A4 in here, and I'm going to move over to the right and make sure that the orientation is portrait. Now, when it comes to printing things out, what we need to do is we need to make our poster slightly bigger than the size that it's going to be printed to, because what printers do is they print on large rolls of paper, and then they use a guillotine to cut the posters up to size. Now, if you were to just make your poster the size that you want it to be, when the guillotine cuts, it might be slightly off and that might leave a little bit of white or unprinted area on your poster. So the thing to do is to go down in here to the bleed and we're going to add a bleed guide around the outside. What this means is that when the printer prints this, they will print the poster slightly bigger then the size, then the A4 size, and then the guillotine will cut it down to size, making sure there's no extra white areas around the edge of your poster. So the industry standard for bleed is usually three millimeters. So that's what I'm going to choose in there. You might find some printers, particularly with posters, ask for a larger bleed size, but three millimeters is usually enough. Because it's going for print, it's also going to be in CMYK color. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is the key color, which is black. I'm going to click on create. Now I've got a few panels up in my, uh, in my screen. So I'm going to go to the window menu. I'm going to go down to my workspace and I'm just going to reset my essentials workspace like so. And in case I need any of the other tools, I'll also go to Window, down to Workspace, sorry, not down to Workspace, down to Toolbars, and use the Advanced Toolbar in there as well. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing in a photo, and we're going to be tracing the photo. So I'm going to go to File and Place. Now, there is no import in Illustrator. You always use Place. So I'm going to go and find the file called Guitar from Unsplash. Now, Unsplash is a website that has free images that you can use, and your guitar will be in your appropriate folder for this particular project that's downloadable from the, uh, the website. So I'm going to click on Place, and then I'm going to click and drag the guitar over my entire page. Doesn't matter that it sticks out over the end, that's absolutely fine. I'll just move it up a little bit. Now I need to move my page around. I'm holding down the space bar. That gives me the little hand tool. So rather than having to go over and choose the hand, I just hold down the space bar and I can then drag the page around. Now it really doesn't matter where this is on the page because we're just going to be using this for redrawing but I would like to lock this in position so that I can see what I'm doing when I'm drawing it. So to do that, we're going to go along, we're going to find the layers panel. Now I can see my layers panel up over here on the right. If you can't find yours, go to the window menu and layers is about halfway down. 
in the layers panel, there's a tiny little arrow. And if I click on that arrow, it shows me there's a linked file over here, which is the photograph. I'm going to go to where it says layer one and not the linked photo, photo itself, but next to layer one, I'm going to double click on the layer and I'm going to say dim images to 50%. What that will do is that will lighten up any bitmap pictures. Remember at the beginning we talked about bitmap versus vector. Well, the guitar is a bitmap image. So this will lighten up any bitmap images. And it just means that when I'm using the vectors on there, I can see what I'm doing. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the linked image itself. So next to linked image, not the layer itself, but next to linked image, there's an eye. You can see I can show and hide the guitar. And I'm going to click next to the eye to lock the layer down. So I can't touch that layer by mistake. While we've got this up and before we move on, have a look at the page. There's a black inner line and a red outer line. The black inner line is my A4 page size. The red outer line is the bleed. So when we're creating things later on, just make sure that you put things up to the bleed. Don't stop at the page. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use some of the tools that we've looked at already to redraw the guitar. I'm going to be drawing with just a black stroke. Now, I can either choose my stroke from here or if I go to the properties panel, when I start working, I can choose the stroke from in there. But you can see because I'm not on a tool yet and I haven't started drawing, that hasn't popped up. The fill, I'm going to choose none. So we've just got a stroke on there. I'll close down this little color panel that's popped up. Now, <clears throat> choose any tool that works for you. You could choose the pen tool and you could start to click and go round this shape. So I could say start there and click over there and I could click and drag and I could go over here and I could click and drag again and click and drag again and just keep working my way around the guitar. Now you see that's actually quite a fast way of going around the guitar. I'm going to get rid of it though. But certainly when you first start out, it's not the quickest. Once you get into it and you're happy with the, the pen, it's very fast. So instead what I'll do is I will use this little tool, the pen, which gives you the curves. So I'm going to start and draw around my guitar. Now, so that I can do this accurately, I'm going to zoom in. I'm using either control on a PC or command on a Mac and plus to zoom in. Like so I'm holding down the space bar to give me the hand tool so I can move around my page. So let me start right over here. Um, at the neck of the guitar. So I'm going to use this tool and click, and then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click again. And what we're doing here is we're just clicking to create curves. If you make a mistake and think, oh, I shouldn't have done those curves, use Control or Command Z to undo. I will do another one here. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click. Space bar to move around the page and continue on there. Alt click, Alt click, Alt click, Alt click there. I think I'll go up to the top here and Alt click up there. Maybe down here and maybe over there. Now, the reason I've done that in two bits is I know that I can pull that in. I can pull that out. So moving up the um, neck of the guitar. I'll go right to the top here. I'll do one click there. Click here. Once again, using the alt key, clicking there. Now you see I made a mistake and this happens. I'd love to say I did this just to show you, but it really was a genuine error. I'm going to use control Z to go back again. When I get to the top of the guitar here, I forgot to hold down the alt key. So I'll alt click again, alt click, alt click. Oh, run out of space there. Hold down the space bar and pull that down. And I can even zoom in a bit closer if I need. Once again, Alt, click. I'm just going to do this like so. 
we're not going to be terribly accurate at the top here when we come to draw this we want something which is more stylized alt click there and then we'll go all the way down to where i started over here and i will alt click on that let's zoom out a little bit over here so i can now use the same tool again and click and start making curves and i've got a curve going on over there and over here i've got another curve going on as well now this is a problem and i'm going to show you how to get how we can get around that i've got another curve there but this one is not a curve it's kind of coming in with a little kink what you can do is if you go to that path well you could either change and use the white selection tool and select that and then curve it around with the little dots that you get we looked at that in uh, a number of lessons ago or you could use the anchor point tool and you can click and drag oops let's try that again you could use the anchor point tool and you could click and drag out handles to curve it off or using this curvature tool you can just double click and that will make it into a curve at the same time so I'm going to move along with my curvature tool here. I'm going to double click on that to make sure it's a nice smooth curve. Pull this out. There. Double click that one to make sure it's a smooth curve. And the same over here. Double click on that. Double click this one. Pull this one out. Pull that one out there. This one goes in here. And then we just double click. You notice I'm not being overly accurate with the shape. I just want something which kind of looks the part for the guitar. We're going to stylize this quite a lot. This will be quick. That goes in. This goes in. This goes in over here. That one on that side. And I think I'll do the same with these ones here and just get that sort of shape along the top. Let's zoom right out. Control and zero or command and zero on the keyboard will fit your page to the document. Now I want to hide the background. So I'm going to go to the layers and I can just click on that little eye next to where it says linked. And that's our guitar shape ready to go. Have a look along it. If you find that, or maybe some kinky bits in, in there that you didn't want, just go back to the tools and either double click to round them off or use some of the other tools to make sure your shape looks exactly as you want it. Mine's not quite symmetrical up the top here but that doesn't matter as you'll see later on some of this is actually going to be cut off on the final piece. Let me stop there so you can try that out. Have a bit of a go and get to this stage here. Get some sort of guitar shape going on.